to talk to you and see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Peter. Nice to be here. It, it's, it's a sad time. Um, it, it's an end of, of an era, not just on a national front and, and, and a political front with Madiba, but Baby Jake and boxing. Well, yes, uh, people like ourselves, when Baby Jake dies at the tender age of 51, you think about yourself and you think, goodness me, we're getting old, we're getting <laughs> over the years. Yes, I knew Baby Jake very well. I've spent a lot of time with him, either as a commentator at ringside when he was fighting or interviewing him, making a documentary on his life. Uh, a young man who came up and nobody gave him a chance in boxing at all. He lost mm. his first two fights, one against uh, Fraser Blackish in Port Elizabeth at the Great Centenary mm. Hall. His second fight was against Kirk Morris up in Johannesburg. And then uh, after winning a couple of fights, he would again come across Kirk, Fr Kirk Morris, a very nuggety and strong, toughest tick boxer from El Dorado Park. He won that fight mm. at the Deepcroft Community Hall with a plomb, and then he prepared himself for being a champion, no, a South African champion first. Uh, he was very short and everybody was mocking his shortness, but after he had teamed up with Theom Tembu, a veteran tra boxing mm -hmm. trainer who also had trained great boxers of his time, like uh, Anthony Kashitol, Anthony mm -hmm. Murodi, and many others at the mm -hmm. Dube Boxing, boy, mm -hmm. boxing Club, boy, Boys Boxing Club, he became, he used what became known, what in boxing we call is your work rate. In other words, how many punches you throw. He threw a lot of punches to, 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 to negate the fact that he was shorter than his opponents. The other thing about his opponents, they looked down on him because he was short. I said, I can't be beaten by this short man. He was the shortest boxer at 1.47 meters. And uh, he threw a lot of punches. But he would then go down to East London because the champion at the time was one Veleli Luzipa, who was mm -hmm. trained by famous and legendary trainer Mzima Simuguni. Mm -hmm. Went down there, was the South African champion. Went down there, knocked out Veleli Luzipa in the 11th round mm -hmm. and came back and fought a few other fights. I remember covering a fight of him at Uncle Tom's Hall with Antonio Badila. And uh, after that, Veleli Luzipa came to Johannesburg to challenge for the title again. It was an epic fight at the Orlando Stadium. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was the last boxing mm. tournament to be held at Orlando Stadium. It, but when did it become clear that this young man could become a world champion? At what point did we see the transition from a national guy doing stuff in South Africa that he could take on the world? Well, at the time, after he lost his title to Mvele Luzibo, he took a little bit of a dip because the title went from Mvele Luzibo to Vuyani Nene, mm. and he fought Vuyani Nene four times, and in all those times he lost, but he never gave up. And he came back again, and then his first fight was when he went to fight in Ireland for the IBF title. And then when somebody, many people told, set up and said, this man is likely going to become mm. one of the greatest boxers we've ever seen. But his biggest fight was a fight against is Michal Khabajal. Mm. Michal Khabajal won the gold medal at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul and he was unbeaten. He was the strongest tick boxer himself of Mexican origin. But Baby Jake Matlala actually taught the world a thing or two that night and beat Khabajal when everybody thought he would not beat Khabajal. It, you talk about uh, never giving up. Do, do you think that that was probably one of his ha hallmarks and one of his uh, at most valuable attributes that he just kept on going, never gave up, and came back often uh, after losing. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. was that was the baby Jake Batala mm. I knew. You must remember also at the same time when he began to build up mm. his career in boxing, he was studying for a BCom degree at the same time, mm. which is I think a lot of boxers do not realize is that boxing is a short career. You can be beaten up in the one minute of the round and that could be the end of you, it could be a garbage. But this man was preparing himself for life after boxing and went on to become a businessman as we spoke early before we started this discussion. We had to become a big, mm. the b businessman, a big man, really, at the end of the day, besides his, his, his stature as, as being short. Mm. I mean, stature in shortness. And he did have a special connection uh, with Madiba, didn't he? No doubt. He yeah. uh, actually, even from the days of the release of Tata, he had a special connection with Tata. I remember 
in 2002 on his last fight against, uh, I just want to make mm. sure I have the right yeah. name, Juan Herrero. Mm. His last fight against Juan Herrero at Carnival City. Tata was at ringside. He had invited Tata to be at ringside. Uh, another person who was at ringside that night was Will Smith, because Will Smith, you will remember, mm. was filming the Ali film in Mozambique and he came over to be at ringside with his son and uh, baby Jake was fighting his last fight for the WBU championship title mm. he took the belt after the fight I was at I was at ringside on that night took the belt and walked across and handed the belt over to Tata as um, uh, as, as the respect he had for the old man Wow and a lasting lasting memories and uh, that they should die uh, so close to each other, uh, two fine boxers, I guess. <laughs> well, yes, that's, that's, the, that's the irony of the yeah. thing that the both of the Tata was a boxer in his time and yeah. Baby Jake was, a, was, was a, a huge boxer of his time despite the fact that mm. he was short in stature and uh, it, it, it's really an irony mm. that they should, they should die at the same time. We've run out of time, but perhaps how should we remember Baby Jake? I think uh, boxing should really, I think the, to pay tribute to Baby Jake, Boxing should correct the things that are wrong with boxing in mm. honor of Baby Jake. And mm. boxing should once again think back of putting together things like a foundation mm. for boxers who are, who are like Baby Jake, foundation for all other boxers who are mm. struggling, who did not make enough money in boxing, and those things uh, in honor of Baby Jake, and both Baby Jake and mm. Tata perhaps, and boxing should really get boxing right mm. in, in Baby Jake's name. All right, Demila Matezo, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very much indeed for sharing your memories and insights of uh, a national hero, Baby Jake Matlala. Thanks My for pleasure. your time.